Welcome to Tactical Talk, this is Zan Khan. Today the topic of our show is Islamophobia and also a very amazing book which is coming out on the 1st of September. Today the guest of our show is Todd Green who is an author and also an American intellectual. Welcome to our show Todd, this is Zan Khan. It's a pleasure to have you on Tactical Talk. Thanks for having me. Let's get to the first question. Since 9-11, uh, most Muslims, including myself, uh, had to condemn every act of global terrorism that had taken place. And we as Muslims also, also had to argue that uh, Islam has nothing to do with terrorism as, and, and that Islam is a peaceful uh, religion. At first, obviously, uh, it seemed logical because we as Muslims wanted to uh, educate others, uh, you know, about our religion. We wanted to tell the people more about Islam, that it has nothing uh, to do with violence. It's not a violent religion. But as time passed by, we kept on condemning, condemning, and condemning. Uh, you know, as, as, as time passed by, it started to become a hurdle because uh, we as Muslims even had to condemn terrorist acts that weren't even done by Muslims in the first place. Um, your new book, which is coming out on uh, September the 1st, uh, your new book that's coming out, uh, Presumed Guilty, how does it address this problem? Well, it addresses the issue by shedding light and exposing um the false assumptions that drive the narratives about Islam and violence, and Islam and terrorism, and I frame it particularly around the, a question that so many Muslims here that you were alluding to, which is, where are the moderate Muslims, or why aren't Muslims condemning terrorism? And the question itself is just deeply troubling and problematic, and in the book I, um, I offer three reasons for why uh, that's a bad question to ask and the false assumptions that are uh, driving the question. First, because the question assumes uh, that Islam is the cause of terrorism. And uh, I know of no legitimate scholar on terrorism or on religion and violence who would make such an argument. Uh, there might be people who claim Islam as a source of inspiration, but when you actually dig deep, more, more deeply, um, Islam is not itself the cause of the violence. Secondly, this question of why don't Muslims condemn terrorism assumes that Muslims aren't condemning terrorism, which, as you just noted, uh, actually, Muslims are doing this all the time. Um, uh, it's pretty ubiquitous, in fact, to find Muslim condemnations of terrorism. And the real question is, uh, why don't we know this? And I talk a little bit about that in the book. And the third and final reason I offer in the book for uh, why this is a bad question and, and it has a false assumption behind it is that it assumes, again, wrongly, that um, uh, Islam, or particularly Muslims uh, who engage in violent behavior in, in a very small minority of cases, um, that they somehow have a, have a monopoly on violence, uh, and, and including the horrific types of violence that we uh, encounter with the Islamic State, uh, when in fact what I argue in the book is that take a category of violence attributed to the Islamic State, uh, torture, uh, persecution of religious minorities, um, genocide, you name it, and Really, all those are categories that um, fit into Western history, United States and European history as well. Uh, we've done all of that in our past, and in some cases continue to do it in our present. Um, so when you start to put these three pieces together, what you discover is just how troubling the assumptions are behind uh, asking Muslims to condemn terrorism. And what I really believe is going on is projecting onto Muslims what many of us in the United States and in Europe have not come to terms with ourselves which is our own history of violence and our ongoing complicity in a violent world order. Uh, Todd, let's get to the second question. Uh, since, uh, as we all know, Donald Trump has been elected as the president of the United States, this issue that we were just discussing and also your book uh, you know, uh, highlights uh, obviously became bigger uh, because uh, you know Trump uh, supporters are fed with some sort of a uh, you know, anti-Muslim propaganda. Um, in your opinion, uh, how much damaging is this for American values that represent interfaith harmon harmony and, and pluralism? How much damaging is this for American values? 
I think we're finding ourselves in the United States at a crossroads when it comes to our values and what kind of nation we want to become, particularly on the question of pluralism and religious diversity and racial and ethnic diversity. These are the very things that Trump and many of his core supporters have been challenging, have been anxious about it. The, the very phrase, make America great again, which is Trump's slogan, in many ways is a harking back to some sort of imagined past in the United States of, of racial and religious purity, particularly white Christian nationalism. And so th this is a difficult time and it's doing a lot of damage to be sure. But I also want to convey that uh, there are a lot of people in the United States um, who are resisting this narrative and who are resisting this demonization of Muslims and who are partnering with Muslims um, here and abroad to try to create a better world and to create a better, better United States for that matter. Uh, in order to, to rethink what the future of the United States should be. So the damage is great, uh, but I still have some optimism that uh, the likes of Donald Trump will not have the final word. Um, as an author and uh, you know, a scholar on Islamophobia, what steps should every society take to build bridges between Muslims and people from uh, other faiths and also the West? Uh, because there has been a sudden far-right movement surge in the U.S. after Trump got elected and also in Europe, um, which is based on a more isolationist approach, if you know what I mean. How do we build bridges between communities and also Muslims in the West? Well, one thing to keep in mind about Islamophobia particularly is that uh, it's partially driven by the lack of relationships that, uh, or the, the non-existence of many relationships between Muslims and those who are not Muslim, whether here in the United States or across the Atlantic in Europe or globally. Uh, and uh, relationships matter. Relationships are game changers. They tip the situation for many people who are not Muslim when they develop a relationship and, and human contact, if you will, with people who are uh, Muslim. So, when I think about what steps need to be taken um, to, to sort of turn this around, uh, whatever we do, whether it's at the grassroots level, whether it's at the level of policy, whether it's our governments, uh, religious leaders, it has to be a focus on crafting, cultivating, building relationships between Muslims and those who are not Muslim. But sadly, uh, according to a poll from a few years ago, we know that about two-thirds of Americans don't personally know a Muslim. You find very similar statistics actually in a lot of Western European countries as well. So there's a lot of anxiety about Muslims, fear about Muslims, and now even hatred and hostility, uh, but uh, there's not a lot of relationships that are there. Uh, and of course you can forge these relationships across the ocean as well, and uh, you know, student exchanges and other sorts of diplomatic work, um, but for the average non-Muslim American, they don't need to go that far to, to uh, reach out to their Muslim neighbors and to build relationships. So whatever it takes to build those relationships, that is the most important thing we can do to push back on the likes of Donald Trump. Uh, populism, this far-right extremism that instrumentalizes Islamophobia uh, for political gain and does so to great damage and in fact to uh, resulting in violence oftentimes against Muslims. Uh, but relationships are, are really the, um, the antidote to all this. Uh, Todd, let's get to the last question. Uh, tell our viewers more about your book, which is coming out, and also where they can go out and, you know, buy the book. Well, the book uh, will come out on September the 1st, uh, and it's available at pretty much any online uh, uh, bookseller, Amazon, uh, Barnes & Nobles, others. Uh, you can also buy it from the press, Fortress Press, um, and, and have it shipped to you as well. Uh, but it's, it's, its release is imminent, and I'm looking forward to having the opportunity to talk with broader publics in the United States and perhaps elsewhere on why um, it's important to stop asking Muslims to condemn terrorism and why it is important for majority populations in Europe and North America to start asking uh, more self-critical, more difficult questions about ourselves when it comes to the way we think about violence, including our own support for or complicity in violence. Thank you so much, Todd Green, for being on Tactical Talk. It was a pleasure having you. Zane, thanks a lot for having me and enjoy the conversation. This was Todd Green, an author and also an American intellectual. We were discussing on one of his books, which is coming out on September 1st, and also on the topic of Islamophobia.
And we were also discussing how to build bridges between the Muslim community and the West. Until the next episode of Tactical Talk, this is Ayn Khan. Take care and goodbye.